Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the respiratory membrane, but we're going to look at a very different type of cell. So previously, we looked at what are called type 1 alveolar cells, and these are really just the alveoli. These are the sites of gas exchange. And if you want more detail on that, go back to the previous video. Here we're going to look at what are called type 2 alveolar cells. Okay? Now I'm not showing any of the cells here, but just understand these are cuboidal cells. So they're going to be very different in function than the type 1 alveolar cells. These were simple squamous epithelial cells. Okay? And being simple squamous epithelial cells, they're perfect for gas exchange because they're very thin. You have a very low distance for gases to diffuse when you have a simple squamous cell that makes up the lining of the alveolus. Okay? However, in type 2 alveolar cells, these are cuboidal in shape, and so these are going to be very different in function. Before we get into their function, let's think about an alveolus, which is, remember, that's the term for one alveoli. So right here, I've drawn one alveolus. Okay, remember, alveolus is the term for one, al one of the alveoli. Alveoli is plural. So this is just one alveolus. Now, inside the alveolus, in their lumen, okay, there's going to be molecules of water that line the surface. Okay? So these blue circles are molecules of water. Okay. Now, water, as we know, look at this picture right here, blow it up a little bit, we know water will actually hydrogen bond with itself. And hydrogen bonds individually are not super strong, but collectively, if you have a lot of molecules of water, hydrogen bonding is very, very powerful. Okay. So what's going to happen is inside the alveolus, if you had nothing else, and we'll see later on that this is actually what can happen in the case of a prematurely born baby, if nothing else, these water molecules are all going to hydrogen bond with each other and they're going to attract one another. These water molecules are just going to line up kind of next to each other. They're going to hydrogen bond and that's going to create what we call surface tension. The surface tension, like I said, is due to intermolecular hydrogen bonding between different water molecules. And collectively, not just one hydrogen bond, but collectively, with all the molecules of water that are going to line the inside of the lumen, of that alveolus, they're going to want to collapse the alveolus. Okay, now that's why I've drawn these arrows all going towards the center. And so if you had no protective mechanism or you had no contingency plan for this, the surface tension due to the hydrogen bonding would cause the alveolus to collapse inward, and a collapsed alveolus is not good at gas exchange. So if you have a collapsed alveolus, or let's say collectively the alveoli are collapsed, you're going to have insufficient gas exchange, so getting rid of CO2 and taking in oxygen and delivering that to the blood. Okay? So having these water molecules that have the surface tension is a big problem. Okay? Fortunately, when we're born, assuming that we're not premature, we have these other cells called type 2 alveolar cells. And these type 2 alveolar cells make a very special secretion which is called pulmonary surfactant. Now pulmonary surfactant is not a molecule, it's actually a, a mixture of a lot of different molecules, many of which are lipid in nature. But what these molecules do is they sort of intercalate between the water molecules. Okay, so they're actually most of them are amphipathic. And so what these surfactant molecules do is they also accumulate in the same place that the water molecules normally do. So they accumulate on the lining of the lumen of the alveolus. And so because of their amphipathic nature, what they tend to do is intercalate between the molecules of water. And what that effectively does is it breaks the hydrogen bonding between the molecules of water. Now, originally it was all that hydrogen bonding collectively and the resulting surface tension that caused the alveolus to collapse. Okay? So if you put these pulmonary surfactant molecules, again it's a mixture of them, but if you put them on the lumen, that is the lining of the lumen of the alveolus, they break the hydrogen bonding and they prevent, uh, prevent a certain degree of surface tension which prevents the alveolus from collapsing prevents it from collapsing. So in order to have a fully expanded alveolus that's good at exchanging gases, you have to have this pulmonary surfactant. And that's really all there is to it. These type 2 alveolar cells produce pulmonary surfactant. It ends up lining the lumen of the alveolus on the walls. 
and it breaks the hydrogen bonds between the water that's already there. Okay, that moisture breaks the hydrogen bonds, it prevents a huge degree of surface tension, and it prevents those alveoli from collapsing. Okay? So that's extremely important. Now, in the case of premature infants, so babies who are born before the nine-month mark, at least significantly before, they don't yet have the capacity to produce this pulmonary surfactant. Okay? It's not to say they won't later on, but at that point in development, you know, if they're born significantly prematurely, they're not going to have the ability to make pulmonary surfactant. So what's going to happen? Well, they're not going to have that surfactant, and most likely the water molecules, that moisture that's inside the alveolus, will cause their alveoli to collapse, and they won't be able to breathe. They won't be able to exchange gases. And so there's two solutions to this problem. If the infant cannot breathe because it's premature, one of the solutions which is done is to put the infant on a ventilator. The ventilator just essentially breathes the infant for them. Okay? The other thing is that they'll give injections of pulmonary surfactant. You have to have that because if there's no pulmonary surfactant, then the alveoli are going to be collapsed and they won't be able to breathe in any case. Okay? So you have to give that pulmonary surfactant to allow the alveoli to expand, or at least to prevent them from collapsing. Okay, so hopefully this made sense. Pretty straightforward topic, um, and you understand a little bit about type 2 alveolar cells. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.